Let's yeah. dive into Dr. Jesse Morse. Doc, what up? It's What's Doc. Going on, Doc? How you doing? I know you're over Good there probably doing, probably doing some PRP. Doc, the eight crypt out, ain't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We like to look clean, look clean, look like a mobster. So, Doc, where are we at? Uh, it was a busy weekend, on? Doc. I saw you pushing a button on social media. Stop <laughs> the injury button. Uh, I, I hate to keep saying this and harp on this. I don't know why. Um, we've had this this injury considered a decline. My kid, Jermaine Johnson, is out Achilles tear. Uh, I talked to him. Uh, you know, he's all he's just an optimistic guy. He's like Smitty, man. He's like, I'll be back better than ever. I'm not worried. Da 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 da. There's so many guys just falling like flies, though. Uh, I think we're already double in week two of last year. Why does it go up every single year? What are we? I mean, we've been talking about this for a year now, Doc. I don't know. Nobody's gonna put a finger on it. We don't. We won't know the actual truth. We can assume turf, diet, preparation, uh, no practice, no rigor, no callus. I don't know what it is, but where you at right now is what's going on so far. Uh, I think it's easier to talk about who's healthy than who's injured yeah. at this point. Yeah. And it's only been two weeks, like legit two weeks. Um, I, I, I Alluding to why we're getting a spike already, uh, soft tissues, I expect that's pretty standard. But um, I think the lack of uh, preparation in preseason uh, and lack of preseason games and they're trying to pull another one away. Uh, is 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 a big deal. Yeah, a guy like Aaron Rodgers or something shouldn't be playing in the preseason, but in my opinion, the rest of the guys should. And 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 I think with as much money as they're being paid, they're like, hey, I don't want to waste my bullets, but those are practice reps and they have to be practiced in order to fire that, that tissue to get it ready to get them on the, to be on the field when it's actually go time. And 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 most of the guys play it, you know, 30 snaps, 50 snaps over the course of preseason if you're lucky. Uh, most of the guys that play in preseason don't e- aren't even on the rosters anymore, right? They're 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 not they're they're not even NFL players. So it's like, what are we doing here? And then you have, we saw a couple hip drop tackles again, Cooper Cup, and 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 Joe Mixon. Those are the two that I happen to see blatantly obvious or relatively blatantly obvious. <clears throat> and then, you know, I think that I think that whether or not they want to admit it, I think the turf does play a role. I think the travel plays a role. Think about flying 10 and a half hours to Brazil and then two days later flying basically back. You almost right. lose two whole days of, of rest, training, rehab, so on and so forth. Um, it's just, it's tough, you know, and that's before you even really get going. Um, it, it, so it's just unfortunate. And, and speaking for Jermaine Johnson, I actually just made a post like five minutes ago um, begging, advocating. If you are an NFL linebacker, DT, D end, any player at this point, do my do yourself a favor and get a 20-minute ultrasound of your Achilles. Mm. It's painless. If the doc knows what they're doing, it'll be done in 10 minutes. I have one about a hundred feet that way. You lay flat, you put your toes taut so that you can see the Achilles tendon, and you can see with very good specificity even better than an MRI, the quality of that tendon. If it has black holes in it, that's a problem. These guys, we've lost way too many guys to Achilles injuries over the past five years. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you're semi good when you get back. Mm. You know, Kirk Cousins looked a little bit better last night. Still couldn't push the ball, at least no. to my untrained eye. His arm I didn't get to see Rodgers, but but I'm assuming Rodgers looked a little better. But I still I didn't get to see the game, so I don't know. We'll see him on on, on Thursday. Um, and then we lost so many good defensive tackles, defensive ends. Um, you know, saw Dre Greenlaw last year who suffered it, uh, who had Achilles tendonitis a couple of weeks before, and that's why they're, in my opinion, they're being super careful with McCaffrey because they've already seen this story play out once. Yes, different bodies, different people, but same red flags do yourself a favor and look at this teams are not preventative they're reactive mm. Mm. Yeah, this is not a, a this is not a standard protocol but at this point you making 20 to 30 million dollars a year to play football is not standard go out mm. of your way and pull lebron james spend a million two million dollars on your health if it allows you to play two more years it was worth it. 
it, that's the problem is that everybody just wants to be reactive. Hey, I'll get it or it doesn't bother me. You have to change that mindset. By the time I see a lot of the NFL guys, they're 27, 28, 29, it's too late then. You mm. already missed the window. Yeah. You know, for, for 20, 30, 50K in stem cells for regular people is a lot of money. But for someone who makes 15, 20, 30 million dollars a year, that's a drop in the bucket. Right. Right. And, and look, yeah. did you see what they did with Jamar Chase? The team took out like a 50 million dollar insurance policy on him. Yep. If in case he doesn't play or likely gets injured, they 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 the team is covering themselves. You need to be an advocate of yourself. My mentor is the, one of the team docs for the Bucks. I know what they can and can't do. They still have regular patients. They only see players twice a week for about three or four hours. How mm. many players can you honestly see in three or four hours? There's what 50, 60 guys on the squad, not including practice squad. All of these guys should have uh, personal physicians like myself that are qualified, that have resources, that have time. They say, hey, doc, I want to come in and get my this checked out. Are you available? No problem. One of the pros came in yesterday. Like these guys need to be advocates for themselves because once they get injured, look, Cooper Cup potentially lost significant amount of time. You know, Debo just went down with another calf. You know, uh, we saw Justin Jefferson. He, he got lucky. You know, Amon Ra got lucky. But uh, some of this stuff was, was random, and some of this stuff could have been prevented. You know, the greatest predictor of future injury is past injury. Yep. You know what bothers you. Stop trying to push through it. Stop being cheap when, when, when you spend 10, 15, 20K in a strip club, but you don't want to put 20K in your knee. Mm, true. You know, like, that's the problem I have with this. Because, because the quality of the product in the field is less because we're we're seeing less. Let, right? let me the ask you something. Just... Let, let, Go ahead. I gotta ask you something that may be uncomfortable. I know you you mentioned before you got out of the NFL and, and you don't want to mess with it. Are there are there doctors in the NFL though that are suspect to say the least that are basically just there because the owner says, "Hey, we need this guy here or we need this guy here." really not to aid them in bettering them or longevity purposes or allowing them to continue their careers like you're so animate about right now, talking about what they should be doing. Because I've been talking about this investment thing for a while by the players with Smitty. The investment, in my opinion, is not what it used to be. I can look at the body types and tell you that. I don't need to be a scientist, doctor, or anything else, biomechanic or uh, mechanist or anything. I can look at you and say these bodies are not what they used to be. And that tells me that there's a lack of investment but are the doctors also kind of in with the owners, the league, Goodell, everybody else to say, hey, we'll either push them back too quickly or keep them out longer. Is there a, is there a truth to that? So the, the way I see the sports medicine industry, so when you look at team docs, there's two, two parts. There's your surgeons and then there's your non-surgicals. The, I'm the non-surgical. So look at concussions all the sprains, everything that's not surgical, pretty much everything. So the, usually each team has two, um, two of each. Sometimes they have more, but they have other specialties, but those are the main four. Most of them are veterans. They've been doing this for 10, 20, 30 years. It's very hard to evolve in medicine. Think mm -hmm. of it as a horse with blinders on. You don't want to learn all this new crazy stuff. You just do what you've been doing forever. And, 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 and who does the physician work for at the end of the day on a, on, on a protein? Owner. The owner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, the owner, the, 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 the uh, GM, like the powers that be. Unfortunately, those players are temporary pieces. You know, yeah. they, they come and go. Yeah. If you step back and look at it, unfortunately, that's the harsh reality. You have a couple franchise players, yes. But the other thing and, and the other issue with with uh, treating NFL players or professional athletes uh, is that when you are the one of the team docs, you, you um, also have the responsibility of the patient or of the player's family indirectly. Hey, my mom needs this. Hey, my that becomes kind of ridiculous. You literally became a concierge doctor for 60 people. 
mm. and probably another three or four for each of that. And, and some of them like, hey, I know what that doc's going to do because that's what the team policy is. I don't want that. You know, I know yeah. a lot of teams that don't have the resources or won't spend the resources and will only use PRP or only use something that has the data to support it. The right. problem is these are not regular people. These are genetic freaks, right? This is the top 0.5% in the world. You can't just use regular stuff that you're going to treat Joe construction worker. Right. You know, you, yeah. you have to treat them as if they make a million dollars a game like they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense. Man, Doc, how much uh, they just paid back? Think about, think about that 60. thing. 60, 60, yeah, a year. <laughs> like, even if you, as crazy as this number is going to sound, even if you spend a half a million dollars a game on him, it's it's nothing. It's in in that context, it's nothing. Right, right. Yeah. If yeah, if you yeah. prevent him from missing one game, it was worth it. Yeah, you know, it, people don't realize how animate you're animate about it. Obviously, because it's past. He cares about it. Yeah, yeah. You care. But you, the problem I found, Doc, is just like coaching. <laughs> you can't force them to care more than you do. Because if you do, yep. then we're just beating a dead horse. If they don't care more than us. <laughs> We can't yep. want it more than them. We can't want it more than them for them. It's crazy. It's asinine as it sounds, but it's true. Uh, 